Sky at Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Six minutes before eight after that extended interview with the boss of Heathrow Airport. My apologies go to Chief Secretary of the Treasury Conservative MP Simon Clark, although I'm sure he'll be keen to hear how we can get Heathrow Airport working flat out to get business people in and out. But that's a conversation for another day. Uh, now, one thing that was briefly touched on yesterday in the debate was the possibility of uh, more strike action. And of course, in about 10 minutes time, we'll be discussing, sadly, the disheartening news that there could be even greater disruption on our trains. Well, one candidate, Liz Truss, will do, quotes, everything in her power to ensure militant action from trades unions would no longer be able to take place. One of her key backers is Simon Clark, as I say. Apologies for keeping you waiting, Chief Secretary. Uh, what is it that you hope Liz Truss might be able to bring about to try, possibly, and tame the unions? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Well, I think uh, listeners will be as frustrated as uh, as I am about the prospect of yet more strike action on our railways. And that is why what Liz is saying uh, today around how we manage responsible trade unionism is, is so important. And she's clear that if she becomes prime minister, we will act to introduce minimum service levels on critical infrastructure. She will raise uh, the ballot threshold for strike action from 40% to 50%. And she will crack down on uh, tax-free strike pay, among uh, other measures. And it's precisely this seriousness of intent, this desire to to grapple with the big issues which we all know face our country, which means that I'm clear that she is the right person to be uh, my next leader and our next Prime Minister. How did she fare yesterday in the debate? I think she fared very, very well, actually. I think she set out a cool, calm and and very compelling uh, explanation as to why a lower tax pro-growth strategy is the right thing for the country at this time. And I think she uh, she also set out clearly the strength of her feelings about the need to face down the threat of China uh, and to build a a stronger uh, alliance of democratic nations. She she, she, for me, it was it was the the full package and the real deal. And I I think it was, uh, as reflected ultimately in the polling, uh, a, a very convincing conservative message about what the future of our country should look like. Your close colleague Rishi Sunak is accused of mansplaining at times last night. How fair is that? Well, he was certainly uh, extremely uh, aggressive in the in in the early moments of the debate, and obviously, it's not. I'm, I'm not going to attach uh, labels to to, the, to to the approach that Rishi took. Ultimately, uh, everyone has to account for their own performance in these debates and make their their points passionately. There are important issues at stake here, uh, but I, I can see why it got some people's backs up. Yeah, I mean, you all have attended probably more meetings than you can remember when you were working closely with Mr. Sunak. Was he that? What's the word? Strident is the word. Was he that strident in meetings, would you say, Mr. Clark? No, no, he wasn't. And uh, it's important to uh, important to emphasise that. I've always found Rishi you know, very reasonable to work with. But it was a, a, a pretty intense approach to the early moments of the debate last night. And I'm, I'm not really sure that it worked. No, if you go by the polling you've referenced, you're probably right. One thing that was interesting, though, is Mr. Sunak's suggestion that if we were to follow your Liz Truss's plans, we could look at interest rates of 7%. Now, that's something that's going to chill my listeners and the good folk of Middlesbrough, South and East Cleveland. Is Mr Sunak right? Well, no, that, that's a, uh, an independent economist and not linked to uh, uh, Liz's particular plans. He was, I think, setting out what he thought an optimal rate of interest rates might be, which is a completely separate uh, question. The reality is I see no rational basis for saying that the tax cuts uh, that Liz is, is talking about would be uh, inflationary in the way that Rishi was trying to suggest they 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 are because uh, if you look at them it's a it's a targeted intervention to reverse a national insurance rise that came in uh, a few weeks ago and then cancelling a corporation tax increase that hasn't even come into effect it's due to come in uh, next spring so I, I I really do not believe these would be inflationary measures and I certainly think uh, there was an element of project fear last night I'm afraid in terms of some of the uh, the warnings against what I think is a responsible pro-grow strategy to try and ease some of the burden on both families and ultimately on businesses and jobs. And is there a, a, a good number of econ- economists ready to support Liz Truss's plans in this area, to your knowledge? Yes, there are. And I, I think there was a, a letter in the in the papers yesterday from uh, from, from a group, including uh, Shankar Singham uh, and uh, Julian Jessup. So I, I, there is a, there is a, a wide... Uh, obviously, as always with these things, a wide range of uh, economists' views. But the, the, the main thing is, I think most people would say that there is responsible scope for bringing down the burden of tax, provided, obviously, that you take the, uh, the measures in terms of both the handling of our debt and, indeed, of public spending. Liz has been clear that she will. She will have a new spending review. 
when she becomes prime minister. And also, she will treat the COVID portion of our debt, that is to say, the three to four hundred billion directly resulting from the pandemic, as an exceptional debt, more akin to that arising from World War II than from debt resulting from the uh, the ordinary course of government borrowing and spending, which obviously uh, is, is a more structural concern. And so I think it, it's a perfectly sensible uh, offer. And it, it is one which almost certainly will do more to support growth. Uh, added to which, Nick, I would just say this. As Conservatives, we have to believe that a low-tax, pro-growth strategy growing the size of the economy is actually a good in and of itself. And ending the orthodoxy, if you like, that... Uh, this, this all needs to be sort of worked out back to front, is, 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 is important. Liz is clear that there can be, mm. there should be, a focus on underlying growth as a good in itself. That's what her policy would deliver. Lastly, I wonder if you'd respond to a point that I made right at the beginning of this hour, which is if you, not you personally, if the Conservative Party isn't careful, the winner from these debates is going to be Sir Keir Starmer and the Labour Party. How would you respond? Well, the the ultimate reason we're having these debates is to find the right person to be our leader and prime minister. And it's vitally important. Telly? I think it's I think it's vitally important that we discuss the uh, the 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 key points of disagreement here, which are based in in policy, uh, and obviously that our members and indeed the country get to understand the uh, the key arguments that are at stake here. It's vitally important, obviously, that we remember that we are one conservative family. And actually, I did think the latter stages of the debate were. Very important and heartening in that regard. I have the highest regard for Rishi Sunak as a, uh, as both a person and a politician. The point is, you can disagree in good faith. We do, uh, and and that's what this debate is about. Grateful for your time as ever. Thank you, Simon Clark, Chief Secretary of the Treasury. Sorry if I've kept you late. By the way, uh, coming to you a little later than planned. One minute after eight, let's get the latest news headlines on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and. Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom, the two candidates to be the next Prime Minister have clashed.